right, this is Crystal Ball, and we're going to move on to the next class of rhythms. So these are our junctional rhythms. So if we look at our conduction pathway, remember we have the uh, SA node, and then that goes down to the AV node, goes down to the bundle of hiss, and then goes to the uh, bundle branches. Remember the whole point of this is we see the electrical stimulation. So the electrical stimulation in the atrium is supposed to wrap around with these little fibers and make it pump. And then it goes down to the ventricle to these little guys and it makes it pump. That's the whole idea. So what we're gonna talk about now is when the stimulation point is not the SA node and it's not the uh, AB node, it's in the junction itself, okay? So what happens with this one is, let's say that the stimulation point is here. Okay, let me draw it out here actually so it, you can see it better. Okay, so what happens with this one is because the heart is so smart and it knows that the best way to get blood around the body is to make the atrium pump and the ventricle, it actually sends stimulation both ways. So if this is our starting point, it actually sends stimulation up and down. And what that does is it makes it become a race. And it's whoever gets there first. Um, and with this, you actually have the atrium and the ventricle pumping, but you're gonna see something very, very different. So with this one, if the atrium beats the ventricle, then you're gonna actually see some form of a P wave, okay? But because it's going backwards, because normal stimulation should go down the conduction pathway, so because it's going backwards, it's called retrograde conduction. Okay, meaning backwards conduction, and it flips it. So if the wave was normally supposed to be upright, it's going to actually make it inverted. So if the atrium beats the ventricle, then you're going to see some type of P wave, but it's going to be inverted. If the atrium and the ventricle get there at the same time, then you're not going to see a P wave. The P wave is just going to be buried in the QRS. And you can actually have something else happen where the ventricle beats the atrium. So a lot of people don't know to even look for this, but there is a wave after the QRS that sometimes happens that's an inverted P wave, okay? So these are the different things that can happen. It doesn't matter if you didn't know to look for this because you still looked here and didn't see a P wave. All right, so if we go to our questions, is there a P wave? The answer is yes, but inverted. Okay, our next question is, is it regular? All right, so with junctional rhythms, you usually have regularity. So these are regular. You still have one for every QRS, so the conduction is still going through every time. For your PRI, because it's a race to see who gets there first, it will fall out of the normal range. So the normal range of a PRI is 0.12 to 0.20. These will be less than 0.12. So these are teeny tiny P waves because it was a race and it happened just before. So if you see any P wave at all, it will be teeny tiny. The QRS and the QTs are fine. Then you look at your rate, and the rate can be anything. For this one, if you have a rate of 40 to 60, this is going to be our normal junctional, or junctional escape, sometimes you'll hear. Okay? So these are our junctionals. So yes, but inverted, we're going to have regularity, we can walk out the QRSs, we're going to have a teeny tiny PRI, and the rate is going to be 40 to 60. Now why is the rate 40 to 60? 
Because if the stimulation point is down here near the AV node, then you're going to have the normal inherent rate being 40 to 60 for the AV node. So this is where you're going to have the stimulation point actually happen, and it's actually happening down in here. I put it out here so you can see it better, but it's going to be actually happening in the junction. So 40 to 60 is normal for the junction. If you have 60 to 100, but everything else is the same, then this is your accelerated junction or accelerated junctional. Now, I don't really think of a rate of 65 being accelerated, but remember, you have to think of the starting point. So because the starting point is right here in this AV junction, the normal inherent rate should be 40 to 60. So that's outside of it. So it is accelerated from where it's initiating. And then the last one in here is junctional tachycardia, and this one is greater than 100. It still has everything else the same. Yes, but inverted. It's regular. It has to be less than 0.12 if you see anything. Most of the junctional rhythms you're going to see will look like this. Okay? There's just nothing here. You just go straight into the QRS. And that's going to be indicative of the junctional rhythms. Okay? So, all right, I hope that helps. Make sure you're practicing with strips and looking for some of these if you're looking at a textbook or whatever you're using to study with. Junctional rhythms are our next one. Look for the next one, which is going to be our blocks. And those are a hard one for a lot of people. So hopefully you can watch that one. Have a good day.